Hey guys, Solid FPS here, and in this video I'll be going over my Technomancer DPS build, which I've been using to solo expeditions on the highest difficulty setting. Let's get right into it. This is the Technomancer's class tree. All four classes have their trees set up so that gun DPS bonuses are at the top, support and utilities in the middle, and skill DPS bonuses are at the bottom. Since this is a gun-based DPS build, we'll want to focus our attention to the pestilence section of the tree. The Technomancer starts with great built-in bonuses. It has 15% additional long-range weapon damage, 15% skill leech, and 15% weapon leech. Your melee skill also freezes nearby enemies. Since this class favors long-range weapon damage, we'll be using rifles. This means our first major pickup will be this 20% sniper weapon damage bonus. And yes, scopeless rifles are considered sniper class weapons. The next major pickup is this node, which makes it so that when we apply Toxic to enemies, they also receive Vulnerability. This synergizes perfectly with the Technomancer's Blend Around skill, which we'll talk about later. Vulnerability makes enemies take 25% more damage, but when you take a single Marked for Execution node in the Technomancer class tree, that enhances the effect by 40%, which means our Vulnerability will make enemies take 35% more damage. This is a huge DPS increase. Our next big pickup increases our total damage output by another 20% at the cost of taking 15% more damage. This class is meant to keep its distance due to the long range damage multipliers, so the downside of this node doesn't really matter. Also you'll notice I picked up both long range distance reduction nodes earlier in the tree. Long range is normally 18 meters and beyond, but with these two nodes it'll be 12 meters instead. This will allow you to play more aggressively and still benefit from this powerful multiplier. The final big pickup is this node which increases damage to enemies affected with Toxic by an additional 30%. This is yet another powerful multiplier that we'll be taking advantage of. To finish off the tree, grab this last 10% damage to Toxic node and the 15% resistance piercing at the bottom. The reason we grab these and not any other big nodes is due to consistency. We won't be using abilities consistently enough to benefit from any conditional weapon damage nodes in this tree. Moving on to Technomancer skills, we're maining Blighted Rounds and filling our other two skill slots with some functional utility. Cold Snap to bail us out of trouble by instantly freezing nearby enemies, and fixing Wave for a burst heal when our life leech just isn't cutting it. Blighted Rounds are the core reason why a gun DPS Technomancer can work as well as it does. This skill makes our gun apply Toxic on demand which synergizes with our class tree picks, enabling our Toxic and Vulnerability multipliers. Our bullets also gain a bit of AoE damage, which helps spread Toxic and Vulnerability. Most importantly, it converts our physical gun damage to anomaly damage, which means that enemy armor isn't something we have to worry about anymore. This is why we picked up the 15% resistance piercing node. Since Blighted Rounds are the core to our build, we need a way to keep them active as long as possible. That's where this tier 1 trick up the sleeve mod comes in. As long as we keep killing enemies, we'll never have to reload. If we never reload, the skill remains active. Another tier 1 mod I considered core to our build early on is Spare Mag. If we get ourselves in a situation where we miss too many shots in between kills and get forced to reload, this gives us a second chance to keeping our gun buffed during combat. Later in the game you'll be able to play with higher tier mods. Toxic Lead is a tier 2 mod which I consider core in our build. It also replenishes ammo on kill, but only if the enemy was affected by Toxic. When combined with Trick Up the Sleeve, the ammo refund is significant enough that you can feel pretty comfortable spamming shots and keeping a loaded mag. With ammo refund covered, our next step is to find and slot in other DPS increasing mods. A couple powerful ones to look out for include Sharp Eye and Bloodlust. Both of these give huge firepower bonuses on kill that stack up to 3 times. Since expeditions reset if you die once while solo, you can consider using a mod or two for survivability. A powerful one to look out for is Damage Absorber. This mod effectively doubles your armor at level 50, raising your damage reduction from about 50% to 67%. It doesn't sound like much, but it's quite noticeable in practice. As far as ideal gear stats are concerned, I'm always looking for items that have bonus firepower, close range damage, and long range damage. It's ideal for Technomancer to be further away, but when you're solo you don't have any guarantees, so having close range damage as backup definitely helps. As for our weapon variant of choice, I stick to the rifle standard variant due to the fact that they are scopeless, have a reasonable mag size, and have a 300% crit multiplier. 
I usually mod in tier 3 killing spree for an additional 75% weapon damage after 3 kills. Another powerful tier 3 weapon mod to look out for is Dark Sacrifice, which also grants 75% weapon damage, but has no buildup. Here's what our character stats page looks like so far. Remember though, we gain plenty more damage from conditional things like firepower from mods and damage to toxic affected enemies. Those things aren't shown here. My build with all conditional effects active is currently able to hit a top end of about 2 to 2.1 million per crit. And of course, it wouldn't be a build video of mine without a quick numbers check. I won't get too technical on you guys, but basically almost every source of damage in this game has a multiplicative effect on the final number you see in game. This means that diversifying your stats across many applicable damage types will result in some big juicy numbers. That said, my build right now should be peaking at about 1.8 mil up close and 2.1 mil out far. With enough time and investment into further optimization, we should be able to bring this thing up to a peak of about 2.4 mil up close to 3.1 mil out far with the kinds of mods we're looking at. We can most certainly hit bigger numbers if we switch to a bolt action or a one shot rifle, but this build is worth the time right now due to how practical it is in the current endgame. Anyways, hope you all found this video useful, and if you did, feel free to like and subscribe or swing by my Twitch stream when I'm live. Uh, for the remainder of this video, I'll be running the Coliseum Expedition on Challenge Tier 15 to show you guys what this build starts to do when it comes together. This must be the Colosseum.
Who the hell are you? Trap. <sighs> what a bunch of clowns. That's the last of the monsters, but that maniac isn't too happy about it. Here we go. Shot. Maybe you'll finally shut up now. The pot is ours. And there it is. That's a that's a run for the gold on challenge tier 15. Eight minutes on Coliseum, not bad. Now did we get anything cool out of this thing for the video? That's the question. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay and uh, found the build video informative. Definitely will be uh, streaming a lot of Outriders throughout the month of April. You know, legendaries, but you know, purples and blues can be good too. Um, but yeah, boys, thanks for watching the video and, you know, subscribe if you're new. Follow my Twitch channel as well. That's where I'm live pretty much almost every single day. And yeah. Hope to see you guys in there. Take care, guys.